Hello and welcome to Rotted Reviews, and today I'm going to be tackling another patron request, this time coming from patron Ben Grimm, who wanted me to watch and review the 1997 movie Promutos, The Fallen Angel. And why he wanted me to review this movie is, according to Ben, Olaf Ittenbach is a German director known for his gore and effects. Love to see what you think of his low-budget style to the madness. So here's the thing, is I had never heard of Olaf Ittenbach previous to this. This actually happens a fair bit, and it always seems to surprise the people that I tell about this, is um, (laughs) there seems to be this misconception that because I host a horror review channel that I know everything about the world of horror, and that's simply just not the case. Uh, it, It happens actually quite a bit in which no matter how many movies I watch, no matter how many filmmakers I expose myself to, no matter how much I learn... I I always come across conversations about, you know, fan groups and so forth of this, you know, Norwegian filmmaker and so forth that, you know, from the 70s that I had. There's always that little niche kind of carved out there that a lot of people do know about. I've just never been exposed to it. I'm ignorant on the subject and uh, (laughs) it's actually kind of fun for me. I enjoy not knowing things because it's always an opportunity to learn and One thing that I have learned over the course of my entire life, professionally, creatively, hobby-wise, just everything that I tackle, is if you actually go down the rabbit hole and you start really learning about a particular topic, you realize that the more you learn, the less you know. (laughs) You know, you really start to kind of get in the weeds with this stuff. And, you know, for me, horror films is very much a big passion of mine. So it's always kind of refreshing when I hear a name like Olaf Ittenbach and realize that there is this kind of whole cinematic subculture of fans of this German filmmaker that I had just yesterday never heard of. I think that that's exciting. So anyway, I did go ahead and I watched Promutos the Fallen Angel. I caught it on Tubi TV, which is currently available, um, I, I, at least in the U.S. I don't know about elsewhere in the world, um, but yeah, that's where I saw it. I wasn't able to find it anywhere else, but fortunately, Tubi saved the day, as it often does. I love Tubi TV as a service. So what is this movie actually about? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh <laughs> And I watched it. I swear to God, I watched it. I have no idea. The best thing I can really come up with is that before Lucifer, there had been previously two fallen angels, the very first of which was Prumutos, who has relics or a relic that stays on Earth and, you know, causes global catastrophe, you know, gives people the power of controlling undead armies, which historically... Uh, is how Genghis Khan came to power and so on. And, you know, it, it tells a lot of backstory tales during the opening credits or previous to the opening credits, which was actually kind of fun. Uh, and then we actually get into the movie itself. And so far as I can tell, it's, um, and I'm not joking here, it's about a guy that gets kicked in the nuts so hard that he realizes that he is the offspring of Promutos and is the gateway in which he can return back to Earth, causing undead zombie stuffs to be happening around him. It's a whole thing. So this is the third feature-length motion picture from Olaf Ittenbach, who started things out in 1989 with Black Past. And I've been kind of reading up on a lot of this, and it's been fairly fascinating about the history of German horror and so forth, uh, even going so far back as like the 1920s, and talking about films like Nosferatu. And then over the course of cultural shifts, changes, uh, wars, certainly, and uh, you know, you know, blackout periods for when horror was allowed, and then you know, once the VHS market came into being, uh, then we had situations that kind of very much mirrored the UK video nasty crackdown thing also happening in Germany, and then the ultimate uprising from that with the underground tape passing. And therein, Olaf Ittenbach really came into his own. He was inspired by a lot of works, including The Evil Dead and Fulci's 1979 Zombie, and that kind of inspired him to want to do his own thing, and I think that that may be an element of why Ben recommended this to me, knowing that he had recommended uh, international Evil Dead movies to me in the past very recently, Uh, and I can kind of see some of the inspiration that was taking place within this. Within Promutos the Fallen Angel, there is a certain level of cheeky humor kind of embedded throughout, which I did appreciate. The problem with this movie, as far as I'm concerned, is uh, aside from the humor and the gore, everything else. 
I did have a fair amount of fun watching this movie in places. And then in other places, it was honestly a bit of a slog to get through. Uh, none of the characters were well written. None of the dialogue was particularly well done. Uh, the, the sound design was terrible. And that was the kind of the thing that was a little bit disappointing to me was I did appreciate the gore. For a low-budget movie that was kind of done in a roguelike fashion back in 97, uh, you know, I mean, it had some decent gore to it. It was at least fun, and it knew how to ramp things up. I've heard some comparisons between this movie and the movie Brain Dead, the Peter Jackson Brain Dead, and I can kind of see where that's coming from. In my opinion, Brain Dead is just heads and tails a much better movie on every level, on the humor level, on the camera work level on the sound design level on the gore level it's just a better movie i really don't think that there's much of a comparison aside from possibly the spirit a little bit you know the kind of thing where you know you start out strong and then you just continue to ramp it up and that was fairly present in Promutos the fallen angel but it was so hard to get through in places mostly because all the other elements of the filmmaking aside from the gore and the humor really just didn't work the camera work was god awful the camera look and style and the lighting and you know framing and everything was absolutely god awful and that was the real shame of it is as much as i was enjoying the gore that's one of the reasons i'm a big horror fan <laughs> as much as i was enjoying the gore unabashedly the fact that it was shown through the lens of somebody that, you know, I don't know, I, I don't want to insult Olaf Ittenbach, but it just felt like I was watching this through the lens of, you know, a potato camera. It was just, it, it was terrible. And, you know, having the characters just be complete, I don't know, oddballs that really never fleshed out. And I mean, I know I'm not trying to go for any kind of third dimension, well fleshed out characters that are exhibiting growth and, you know, drama and so on, and, you know, extreme amounts of conflict that needs to be overcome. This isn't really a, that level of a storyline based film, uh, nor does it really necessitate the characters to drive that kind of story. This is just stupid, slapsticky, low budget, gorehound fun. And in that, I wanted to appreciate it more than I did. I, you know, appreciated it on some level, certainly, and especially as it kind of started to get to the last, you know, 5% or so. Um, you know, there was one element of bursting through the wall of the basement where everybody had been kind of doing the most of the fighting and hunkering uh, that was actually kind of a, a, bit, a bit of a big surprise and a lot of fun. <laughs> However, I just, I couldn't really find myself settling in and enjoying it as much as I really wanted to. And a lot of that has to do with the other aspects of the filmmaking that just really seemed like it was showing that low budget, showing that indie underground feel to a degree that was actually a detraction from the film overall. And the sound design was honestly a big part of that. It really was not great. Um, some of the overdubbing of the characters' voices, a lot of the sound effects and the foley and so on that you know was attached to this uh, to the gore was just detracting from it. The worse it got, the more I didn't believe the gore, the more I didn't enjoy the gore. Um, that's one thing that I've kind of been trying to uh, in part, as a you know, critic, especially of horror films, is gore on its own, on a visual level, is not enough. Um, so often, some of the most heinous and horrible to watch scenes in horror films you know, that are at the same time a delight often have some of the best sound design to go with it and really sell that. You know, I'll take a decent fingernail snapping off with the right sound design over an entire decapitation done to the sound of a clown horn. It's a concert. It's not just one individual instrument playing as well as possible. This isn't a solo act. This is many instruments working in tandem to deliver the best symphony possible. And in this case, although Promutos did have some competent sections overall as an entire concert, it just never gelled for me. Nevertheless, I did think that it was was, again, fun in part. And I don't regret this watch. Not at all. In fact, I'm kind of going back to the very beginning of this review here where I'm, you know, I, my feeling on this is I'm glad that I watched this. Very much so. Because a week ago, I didn't know who Olaf Ittenbach was. And now I do. And now I can safely say that I've seen one of his films and I may watch more of them just to kind of see, you know, maybe I'll start back with his first feature length and kind of see where he very first started from. And maybe I'll start, you know, continue on with something down the road a bit and see how he grew as a filmmaker. But at the very least, if somebody throws out that name, I know of it. And I can safely say that I have now seen 
Prumutos, the fallen angel. So on that note, on that level, on the kind of uh, almost academic horror historian aspect of things, I do recommend this movie, especially considering it is free on Tubi. So I mean, what do you got to lose? An hour and a half of your time to watch some mediocre and sometimes fun gore fest movie from a German filmmaker. That's not the end of the world. That's actually not too bad in my mind. So on that basis, very select odd avenue of a basis, I do recommend this 1997 movie and I am very appreciative for Ben pointing it out to me. So thank you very much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like and subscribe and consider supporting me further with some super thanks or consider joining the Patreon. We have watch parties, Discord benefits, and all sorts of great stuff with the lowest tier starting at only $1 a month. So other than that, thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody. And remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted. Uh...